Hello everyone, I'm Paul McGuire Grimes. Just in Time for Halloween is a haunting tale of passion and dreams. From moving to the big city to pursue something larger than life to the nightmares that we can't shake. Writer-director Edgar Wright's latest film, Last Night in Soho, is a twisty ride. It will be in theaters October 29th, and I want to talk about it. This is Paul's trip to the movies. Thomas and Mackenzie stars as Eloise. She's a budding fashion designer who sets out to London to attend the London College of Fashion. Her granny tries to warn her of the dangerous road that lies ahead, but Eloise really dismisses her overprotective ways. She's an independent, self-assured young woman who rents her own apartment after being mocked by the other schoolgirls. She's always been drawn to the glitz and the glamour of 1960s London scene, and in her dreams, she's transported back to a nightclub in that very part of Soho. It's there where she meets this mysterious singer play named Sandy, played by Anya Taylor-Joy. Eloise's infatuation with Sandy morphs from dreams to nightmares, playing into a darker reality that she's really unsure of anymore. The film also stars Matt Smith, Terrence Stamp, and Dame Diana Rigg. Edgar Wright's passion for music is always infused in his films, and much like the lead character in Baby Driver, Eloise is constantly listening to music, drawing inspiration from that 1960s era. There are so many distinct music choices throughout the film. It's really apparent that the Kinks and Petula Clark's Downtown are really driving Edgar Wright, his actors, and these characters. As Sandy, Anya Taylor-Joy does her own singing with Downtown, and the song really aptly fits this flashy allure of that part of town. These 1960s dreams uh, provide a really stark contrast from the rainy and dreary contemporary London that Edgar Wright puts Eloise in as she really struggles with school. It all looks and feels like this hypnotic dream uh, from these, this stylish chanteuse to the sinister and ugly underworld. Now things don't make sense to Eloise, and that's part of the game for the audience, is putting these pieces together. And naturally, Edgar Wright throws in a few red herrings to really lead us off track. He co-wrote the film with Christy Wilson Cairns, and they've given it this shocking ending that really goes all out in a really bonkers direction. I actually applaud them for not taking the safe way out. I think that the ending completely made the movie for me. Thomas and Mackenzie has a very natural presence on screen, and the youthful, innocent qualities play right into the aura that Eloise has about herself, that then descends into this slow burn, manic unrest. Anya Taylor Joy completely captures the 1960s period and really nails this enigmatic quality about Sandy that draws Eloise in. And I should go without saying that Terrence Stamp and Dame Diana Rigg are just pitch perfect in their supporting roles. Edgar Wright has made Last Night in Soho a nightmare on Elm Street meets Stanley Kubrick meets David Lynch type of movie. There's no denying the look and design in the film, but that often seem to be the focus instead of really digging deeper into the effects of this psychological mind twist that Eloise finds herself in. I'm giving Last Night in Soho three and a half out of five ticket stops. If you like my review today, click subscribe on my YouTube channel. I got to talk to Edgar Wright and Anya Taylor-Joy, so you definitely want to check out those interviews. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Paul's Movie Trip, and then go to my website, paulstriptothemovies.com, for even more reviews. Thank you so much for watching my review of Last Night in Soho. This is Paul's Trip.